I'm balanced precariously on a rock uh, because I found an exposure uh, in the, at the beginning of uh, the, the Black Hills. There's this really lovely uh, little, um, how would you describe it? It's, a, it's like a waterfall, only it's not a waterfall. Um, I've, I've set something up, I've got, an, I've got some exposures from it. Uh, those things, we'll have to see what they're like in, in, the, uh, in the edit, obviously. Uh, but today, I've taken a trip to Wales, uh, where I am going through the uh, Black Hill Mountains and possibly onto the Usk Reservoir. It depends what time I've got uh, when, I've, uh, when I'm done. It's for something maybe a, nearly coming up to five o'clock uh, and the sun's just starting to get to that point where uh, in certain areas where there's a lot of, of, of shade, it's giving a, a quite a nice effect uh, on the ground. Um, it's two shots that I've got here, one looking that way and one looking that way. Firstly, I'm sorry about the audio. There's an awful lot of wind around here and I don't have my microphone with me. I haven't been able to get hold of the little adapter for the Osmo Pocket. It's a long story, but anyway, I'm on top of the Brecon Beacons, or at least on top of some of it. And we're about half an hour away uh, from Golden Hour. If you don't know what Golden Hour is, that's the time uh, when the pictures start to look really cool and you get this really nice light coming out from the sun that's setting. Uh, and we'll be able to take shots right the way through into sunset. Now I've got the camera set up and I've got an exposure. So here you can't actually see very much because a, a lot of what I'm seeing in the viewfinder is just black. Uh, but I'm doing this at f22 at uh, two and a half second exposure and I've just done a test shot and it actually looks pretty good. Uh, now you see I've got my uh, uh, that, uh, thing out, that's because I pressed the wrong button. There's absolutely no need to have uh, that up, uh, up there. But look at the shot that we're going to, that we're uh, trying to get. Uh, and you can see how uh, the, the sun is, is right at the top there and it's very, very harsh in this frame. So that these, these brighter bits down there, uh, they need the longer exposure to get, uh, uh, to get um, any information there. So we're going to be bracketing this uh, at uh, two stops either way. I've put the camera on this setting here, which is the uh, self timer. It's going to go off after two seconds. And with the camera all set up, all I had to do was sit down and wait for the right light. I actually came to the Brecon Beacons because this is actually one of my favourite drives in the world. We're, we're travelling through uh, the Black Mountains and I've had some fantastic experiences here in the past just by driving through it. The place that I am right now, we're not that far off the road and I haven't had to hike for miles and miles and miles to get something which looks absolutely stunning. In fact, one of the things about the Brecon Beacons is that you can get, I mean, you can just look at anywhere and there's an exposure. There is something that is in interesting, uh, that is captivating, that you want to take a picture of. One of my favourite experiences happened on this very road. We have birds of prey here, and as I was driving down uh, a little bit further along the road, there's a, a large drop-off. Uh, so if, if your car went over there, you would be gone completely. It's just a complete drop-off. Uh, in, into the uh, into the abyss, basically. And as I was driving down here, one of the birds of prey, and I don't know, I think it was probably a kestrel, because there are kestrels around here, actually uh, flew by the side of my car. He was over the big ravine, uh, and I was driving. Now, I, I slowed down, partly because I didn't want to go off the edge of a cliff, but partly because that was such an amazing experience to be traveling alongside uh, a, a bird of prey at exactly the same time. I wish I could have filmed that somehow. I wish I could have captured that memory. I know it's windy, but it's still quite warm and it's really pleasant. And the sun is just up there. 
are heading down uh, right now. And one of the great things about doing landscape photography actually is, is once you've set stuff up and you're just waiting for that light to be right, you've actually got plenty of time to just sit and enjoy the scenery. And that's something that I think that we often miss. I know that I do. If I'm going around somewhere, you know, going to an English heritage site or something and taking as many exposures as I can, I get back in the car at the end of the day and I am absolutely shattered. Yet I've barely walked at all. I've barely uh, done any anything strenuous. It's just the fact that I'm so concentrating on taking photos and finding where the next good photo is that you, you often get to that point where it's just exhausting. Fun, yes, still something that I'd still want to do, but just exhausting. And now I've got half an hour as the sun goes down. I'm watching a sunset sat in the Brecon Beacons. That's not a bad thing at all. One of the things that I did want to say, this is only my second time using an ND filter and I didn't quite get it right the first one. The first time I went to the Yelan Valley and actually I got some good shots from there but I've I got what I've got and it's not an expensive ND filter. It's not a really good one. It's cheap. It's uh, It's got a, a, a an orange, not an orange, a uh, yellow cast on it, which you've got to take away in Lightroom. It's okay, it does the job, um, but it's not as good as having that, that sort of top-notch equipment. But sometimes you have to make those compromises, not because it's not worth saving up to get a, a, a better brand of ND filter, it clearly is, but purely because the absolute, the cost of photography, the cost of any photography which isn't bog standard, I've got an iPhone, what can I put on the front of it, is, is sometimes immense. I hope you can hear me okay over the noise of this wind. Now, you won't be able to see this on video. It's about 22 minutes past seven. About. I mean, it's that. Uh, but we've got something. Um, we've got, we've started to get bits of light coming down from there. We're starting to go into that sort of classic golden hour. So I'm going to open up my camera. Uh, let's take an exposure and see what it looks like. I wish I could have shown you that, but there's so much light reflecting off the camera that I just couldn't uh, take anything. I'll try. I'll have to try and find a way of actually getting that onto my uh, onto my phone or something. So that's uh, uh, so that I can show you these things when I edit the video. But uh, I've got five exposures there. I think it was pretty good. I'm going to hold off for a bit. Just wait for that light a little bit longer. See if it, it brings out anything else. It's only at the very, very beginning of Golden Hour right now. So there's plenty that it can do. There are actually some really very nice clouds up there. Really nice shapes in the clouds. And that's causing beams of light uh, to come down onto the landscape. I'm not sure if we're going to get those. We might do. You never know. And we've got enough uh, with the five exposures here uh, that actually we can get something, uh, we blend something in, inside Photoshop that'll, that'll bring a lot of that out. I am noticing though that the brightest of the exposures is not sharp, whereas the rest of them seem to be perfectly sharp. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but again, it's not something I can do a lot of here because I don't know how to fix it, but it's something that I'm going to be able to go back home and I go, okay, well, this was the problem I had. How do I fix it for next time? I just realized that I did something very, very silly. I left my VR on. I keep doing it. Uh, I need to start getting into this habit of checking that. Now, uh, there's rays in the sky that are starting to come through, so I'm going to take another exposure. I'm just going to give it a bit, bit longer, just a touch longer, because the sun's come out from behind those clouds a little bit, and I just wanted to drop down a little bit more, if it will. Uh, anyway, uh, turn that off, did another exposure, and straight away the focusing problem seemed to be sorted out. So that's where I've been going wrong with this particular video. Uh, anyway, I got another shot in just a second. There's, again, there's this red in the sky that's nearly there. I can feel it's nearly there. I, I just want to wait for it to, uh, to actually happen, but I think it might happen any minute now. So go back over to the camera and uh, take that photo. And I'm so glad that I waited because this was the shot that I ended up with. You can just see those those god beams, those beams of light as it hits the landscape. It's subtle, but I really like it. And that golden sky is indicative of golden hour. I'm really pleased with the colours here and the way that the, the darkness of the clouds juxtapose the setting sun. So 
so I moved because uh, the sunset was being obscured by the mountain. The sort of the really nice reds that I'm getting right now were completely obscured by the mountain. And um, uh, I've put it on, what are we on, three seconds at F9, um, which I'm kind of thinking I should... Yeah, four seconds at F10 is a bit too much. I can adjust my polar, my uh, variable ND, of course. Um, to actually make things four seconds. Okay, that might be better. I have been able to focus uh, on a on a point in the distance, but I'm again, I'm not sure that the whole thing is in focus. I, it's uh, it's awkward. <laughs> um, I'd I'd like some better understanding of how focusing uh, works. So I'm trying to focus on middle distance, which might not be right. Uh, I tried the focusing on the the, the sort of where hyperfocus would be, uh, and it, it can't. I mean, it's so dark right now it can't find any any focusing points so that's a problem um okay so i've got one i'm going to go for another exposure uh, and I, I really it's just hoping for the best f, f11 at four seconds i should be able to get something now the other problem is it's very windy up here and i'm not entirely sure uh, whether the camera's not being buffeted around I've got a, a B-free uh, tripod from Manfrotto. If you're aware of the rings, they're not the hardiest uh, um, tripods. They're light, they're nice, they're great to travel, uh, but they might not be as, as stable as something like that. This time I didn't have to wait nearly as long for the sun, and within no time at all, I'd got the exposure that I wanted. There's a beautiful orange glow at the bottom of the thing. I'm going to hang around for a bit more uh, and just wait and make sure that the light is as good as it's going to get, uh, just as the final bit of the sunset uh, happens. Uh, but I, I'm pretty pleased with that. If everything turns out well, it looks sharp in the viewfinder from what I can see. Uh, it looks to be good uh, light-wise, and I've got some uh, plenty of things to play around with that I can merge together in Lightroom to get all those colours out, to get all that definition out of the sky, out of the clouds. So hopefully, uh, all done. I'm going to get back to the editing screen in a minute. Uh, and it's getting cold out here, uh, and actually put a final image together. And this was the final image that I ended up with. What I love about this is the really subtle colours of the sun and the red glow that you get towards the end of Golden Hour. Again, I'm thrilled with how this came out, especially as I'm still new to photography. I've not had the chance to get shots like this before. This was a fantastic trip to somewhere that I'd driven through many times, but just not had the chance to explore. If you like what you've seen in this video, please do consider subscribing, and I promise I'll try and do something about the sound for next time.